goodness gracious me, standing room only. Uh, we are here to have a chat and maybe have a little bit of a sneak peek at the wonderful The Last Kingdom. It's not just going to be me. I'd like to introduce some very special people onto the stage. So please, would you welcome Alexander Drayman, David Dawson, Millie Brady, Toby Regbo, Emily Cox, Eliza Butterworth, and writer Stephen Butchard. Now, uh, we will be taking some questions from you guys, so start having a think about that. Uh, we're gonna, I was going to take the lead first, though, please, if you may. Alex, I will come to you first. Alexander. Thank you. Uh, now, at the beginning of season two, we saw Uhtred uh, full of wine and women uh, and licking his wounds a bit. Where do we see him at the beginning of season three? Uh, less women <laughs> at the beginning <laughs> of season three. Um, Uhtred's still with his wife, Gisela. And uh, he's, uh, he's kind of got a nine to five job. Um, he's, he's very relaxed working for Alfred, but you know, obviously that's not gonna last long. Well, this is it. So, so he's, kind of, he's quite relaxed, he's kind of settled. What, what could possibly go wrong? I don't think I'm allowed to tell you. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to say. <laughs> uh, right, Stephen, you are the writer. Well done, first of all, congrats. Um, absolutely. It all comes out of his head. Season two uh, looked at the cost of forging a nation and uh, the sacrifice that comes with that. What are the overarching themes of, uh, of season three? What have you got in store for us? Uh, the goals remain the same. You know, Alfred still wants an England. Uhtred still wants Bevenberg. But they seem to be further and further away. You know, we, we, we joined episode one and, and Alfred is unwell. Uh, and he's beginning to doubt. Uh, so very much he wants to safeguard the future and a legacy. Um, and he's wondering who he can rely on. Can he rely on God? Can he rely on his people? And the person he thinks he can rely on most is Utrecht. Um, so season three is almost kind of a bromance that goes wrong between Utrecht and Alfred. You know, it really is. It's, 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 um, their relationship is, is sorely tested. Because the, the two men who both love each other and despise each other, you know, together, they would make the complete brilliant man. Because what one lacks, the other one has. You know, Alfred is intellectual forward planning um, with a passion for his country. Uhtred is very much the warrior. Alfred could never be the warrior that Uhtred is. You know, but both of them share, share the same goals of wanting a homeland. So it is, it, it's, um, you know, for me, the, the whole piece was about faith and trust and who you can trust um, and very much a test of, of the two main characters with, with every other character in the, in, in, in the series um, echoing or, or, or being caught up in the ripples of, of this relationship between Uther and Alfred. And series three is the best series so far. <laughs> Dead lad. I agree. <laughs> Uh, David, I'm going to come to you. I must say you're looking remarkably well today, thankfully. Um, Uhtred seems to be kind of wading against the tide a little bit and marching to the beat of his own drum. Is, is Alfred's kind of wish going to come true of, of him kind of towing the line in the name of peace and quiet and solidarity? I think to be fair to Uhtred um, and Alfred very rarely This is a is. special moment that doesn't happen often. <laughs> yeah. In the past, they, uh, he's, he has told the line that the Battle of Ethendon wouldn't have been won if they weren't uh, together. And at the start of season three, you see them together, not for very long, but um, together they are an unstoppable, formidable team. And I hope that by the end of season three, um, I think the audience and us want to see them both come together. So hopefully that will happen. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, Millie, hello. You are uh, 1,100 years old this year. Congratulations on that. Uh, and you went up to Tamworth to celebrate. Uh, Alfred is a bit of a badass on the show and in real life. What's it like playing such a legend? Um, I mean, it's so cool. And especially like considering that she is a real person in England's history just makes it even cooler. And when we went to Tamworth, it really sort of brought it home that she is this, 
she was this completely formidable force. And so, yeah, it's so cool. And this season, we get to see a lot more of her kind of become, coming into her um, status as a warrior and, um, yeah, a lot more fighting and coming into her own. She's got a kid now and she's not taking any crap from him anymore. So. <laughs> Is it easier or harder playing uh, an actual real-life character? Um, I think it's, it's been a good balance with this because there were so many gaps in history that we were able to fill in. So there was a lot of artistic license as well as, um, you know, having the legend of her. And so it was a good, it was a good mix, I think, in the end. Um, Toby, one of the uh, key things that, we've kind of, that we love, apart from all of you guys, obviously, is the incredible supporting cast that kind of uh, crop up during the past kind of couple of seasons that we've seen. What have we got to look forward to from season three? I know that there's... Uh, uh, well, from, talk to from, me about blood hair. Oh, for, from my perspective, yeah. um, uh, I'm most of my... Or a lot of my scenes are with James Nor Northcott, who plays Aldhelm, my right-hand man. And in the last season, um, he, he knew that I was basically an idiot, but um, would, was... Um, basically following my orders and in, in, in this season we see more tension and someone is coming in between us uh, and so our, our, our relationship is a lot more layered and a lot more interesting and uh, my terrible decision making can't go unanswered for, for, for much longer. Yeah. Uh, Emily, hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, can you tell me, what, what does it mean to be a Dane or a Saxon at this point in the story? Uh, the characters are constantly kind of switching allegiance. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I think for Breeder, it basically means the same as it's always meant. I think um, anybody who leaves the Danes is a traitor. Um, the Saxons, in her opinion, just really aren't... Um, on people she wants to really deal with, but she has to. Um, and this season will very much be about if Breda is able to forgive Uhtred or not, and if she does, um, what it needs for her to do that. Uh, and last but not Eliza, hello. 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 Uh, talk to us about what I imagine was a very relaxing and sunny and calm kind of shoot in the middle of winter in Hungary. What was, yeah. what was it like for everyone? Well, I, ooh, very loud. Um, just, I think it was, it's awesome to film out in the wintertime in Budapest because I think it just creates the best atmosphere for our show. That's kind of dark, gritty, amazing tale with battles. Um, it was freezing, but it was definitely worth it. And we have the best um, film crew out in Hungary, and we film for about seven to eight months of the year. Oh, my goodness. Yes. It's only really got, like, two temperatures, really. It's just, like, either 35 degrees above uh, zero or it's 35 degrees below zero. And then there's, like, a one or two days in the middle where it's kind of nice. It's really hot or really cold. Yeah. <laughs> what, are the, uh, what are the battle scenes like to, like to film? I'll ask you, Alexander. What are the... the battle scenes? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the, the, the battle scenes are always fun. I think I certainly enjoy them very much. I think everybody does. But in winter, it's... it's uh, the problem is that even when you're in the, starting off in a field of snow, which is often the case, by noon, that field is mud. But I'm talking this deep. And, uh, and once you go down, you're wet. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's the biggest problem. You just freeze all day. Um, now... Alexander, you, Uhtred has got a legions and legions of fans across the world. I think most of them are in this room right now, including, in, <laughs> including, the, including the French football team. Uh, Apparently so, uh, yeah. What do you think is so appealing about The Last Kingdom and what's, what, what is generating all of this interest? Well, you know, I didn't, I didn't uh, go to school in England for very long, but I believe... English history is only taught from, from 1055 onwards. And, you know, it's yeah. a period of history that nobody really knows that much about. Um, you know, I've, I've had many conversations with uh, Bernard Cornwall about this, who, who, who does so much research on this period of history. And uh, even he has to piece much of it together. And I think it's, it's wonderful to have a show that brings that period of time to life in, uh, you know, in such a, a gritty way. Um, and S Stephen, just want to ask you a bit about where we are in, 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 in the timeline in terms of it must be a tough job for you to kind of take Bernard's books 
and kind of condense them into seasons? It's a, well, it's a joy to be honest. It, you know, it, it's. It, How do you decide which bits to kind of keep? Well, you, you know, I think um, I think one of the attractions of the show are the characters. You know, it, it's uh, and for me, it was about making these historical characters real. You know, because there's all that separates us them from us is a couple of hundred years. We're all exactly the same people. Um, so I always focus on a person's story or a character story um, and try and tell the events of the time through that person as much as possible. You know, because I think that's what the audience enjoy. They enjoy seeing history played out through people that they can engage with. Um, in terms of the books, we, we tend to go through two books per season. So. At the end of season three, we're up at book six. And since we started, Bernard has been a busy, busy man. You know, there's still so, a few to come, so, isn't Yeah, there's a few to come still. So, so there's, there's more series to come if people still want it, I'm sure. Um, but in terms of condensing, you have to, you, you choose tent poles throughout. You choose events, the key events, um, and then build the show around it. But also, you have to be aware of, of we have such a great ensemble cast. Um, and people want to see them, and they want to see them be part of it. So you, you have to bring, where I go away from the books, it's a case of bringing characters into, into the story. And Bernard's been so generous, he completely understands that, that television is, is, is so different to the books. Um, so he, he's happy for me to, to veer away from the books, um, and he's always, always supportive of it. And, uh, um, but, but as I say, what I, what I do is, is I try and identify key moments in, in each of the books. And then build everything around those key moments, with, with the people that we know, we love, and we recognise. Uh, speaking of people, I would imagine that there are a fair few more characters yet to be introduced this season. Do any of you have any favourites that you can't? I guess that you can't really tell us what they do or who they are, really. But can you give us any hints as to what is what is left to come? Oh, straight in there, straight in there. Skade's so cool. She's. <laughs> <laughs> she's definitely a, a big favourite. She's just like my favourite baddie. She's great. <laughs> I, I, I think she is. You know, it, it's this young woman who, who holds power over of all of these great Dane warriors. They, they all want to be Skade's boyfriend. It's not the other way around. You know, where you know the warriors want the woman. It's they all want to be connected to Skade. You know, she is. She very much channels the Dane's power. We've got um, my, my son, our son is uh, fully grown and um, he'll play a major part in the new series and uh, we're, we're facing the biggest army we've ever had to face. Uh, we don't have much time and the luxury, when I trained Ethel Fled, he was very much like her father. She had a lot of time to become an, uh, a great leader and with Edward, who's very wayward, we have very little time. Uh, for the people of Wessex to believe that he could be the next king should uh, Alfred be killed on the battlefield. Or, um, plus, we have my nephew, Ethelwald, who constantly wants to kill me as well. So. <laughs> and there's a new character coming on the Danish side as well. His name is Knut. Um, I don't think I can say that much about him, but he's really, really clever. And um, You kind of have a thing for him, don't you? <laughs> no, I don't. I have something for you, Alec. Uh, Uhtred. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, what were your most favourite moments to film this season? Is there anything, is there anything, is there a particular battle scene or is there a great kind of moment between you and other characters that you can kind of... Uh, it was where the aliens came down. The, yeah, brilliant, that perfect. Really good, yeah. <laughs> was that a spoiler? Usually episode nine, those ones, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't get to take part in any of the battles because I'm scared of battles. But uh, um, I've been really lucky to be given some really like devilishly evil scenes this, this, uh, this season. Like, I've been, pretty, much every, pretty much every episode I've got, I've got one good one where I'm Is it being quite, awful. Quite good fun getting your teeth into those kind of scenes. Yeah, it's, it's fun to be awful for a minute, just a minute. You're being very quiet on the end now. What I about you? I say I second that, being really villainous in most episodes. That's what I do best. Um, but yeah, I've, I've also got a few crafty scenes in the works that'll really make you hate Ellsworth even more. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
Is it better to play a baddie or a goodie? What do you, baddie, what do you think? Definitely a baddie. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Second. Big. Yeah. Uh, right. I, I think we're going to take some take some questions. Who's going to be the brave person that uh, is going to stand up first? <laughs> Vin, look at you, son. Straight up. There's a gentleman. Oh no, there's someone already ran here to the microphone. Is this how? Is there a queue? I can't tell. I can't see. There we go. Uh, yes, sir. Hello. Uh, my question was mostly for Alex, but for everyone, really. Um, I wanted to know what kind of process you went through researching the role, but more importantly, was it a difficult battle between kind of creativity and historical accuracy? So do you ever look at a sword and go, okay, Dane wouldn't use this, but it looks really badass? It's <laughs> a good question. I mean... First of all, to answer the first part, first part of the question, I, I think w we've been really lucky in this series. Um, personally, the research is one of my favorite bits of, of uh, the process of creating a character and, and starting a new, um, a new project. But in this case, you know, everything was just handed to us on a silver platter by Bernard. He, he'd done all the research for us. So for me personally, reading the books was a, a huge help and, and a big inspiration. Um, and then... The second question, it's not, you know, we don't, we don't always get a, get a say in right. what we use and, you know, we have a whole department that's responsible for that. And, and, uh, and I, think, I think for them it must be really difficult to, to make that choice because I think everybody wants to stay as accurate as possible. Sure. Um, but then it has to work for the show and, and, uh, and on film and, you know, it doesn't always, for example, the shields, the, there are, there are uh, things that, that are not accurate about, about which shields are used, are they round, are they square, but it's just such a, um, an important part to distinguish the armies clearly in, uh, in such a melee that it was much easier to make one side square, one side yeah. round, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I hope that, that the historians are going to forgive us for that. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Uh, we will head over to, uh, to the lady there. Hello. Hi. We'll go over this side now, thanks. Hi, my question's for David. Um, your portrayal of Alfred is one of the best performances on TV right now. Absolutely. So <laughs> um, I was wondering, what's the one thing you relate most to his character, except for the porridge thing? <laughs> I think I'm, I'm as, I think he's quite a shy guy, and I think I'm, uh, yeah, I think. I'm very uncomfortable in situations like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing very well, though. Oh, thank, thank you. You're doing very well. Uh, well. We'll head over to this side now. Uh, hi there, sir, Mr. Boba Fett. Hi. Um, mine's not a question as such, but for Alex. Um, I started with being a massive fan of the books before the show. And now you're not. No, <laughs> I, I, lo I love the show as much as I love the books, but... Obviously, you're very fond of saying Destiny is all. Can I just once hear your voice saying it in the old English? What? Well, you, you, as, you as tell David me. David writes it. Weirder. Oh, weird, weird at weird uh, bit, Fuller. Weird, weird bit, Fullerad. Weird bit, Fullerad. Yeah. Weird bit. There you go. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. And, and also, one last thing. As a father who's raised two strong, fierce women, I just want to say thank you for all the cast for showing strong feelings. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Well done. Madam. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, everyone from the Last Kings and Fan Safe Facebook group wants to say hello. We love you. Hello. hello. We, we love you too. Three. <laughs> um, they've been voting all week to say question for today and that question is what was the most challenging uh, scene to play in season three if you can do it without spoils <laughs> the most challenging season what about you ladies over there what's the most challenging i, I know season? exactly which scene that is but uh, um they'll you're, kill you're, me you're they'll kill me if i talk about it yeah not that one, not that one. <laughs> what episode is it do we know what episode is uh, it? it's uh, it's episode i think it's last episode, episode last 10. episode episode 10 yeah it, it, I'll tell you this much. It happens against the tree. <laughs> All the best scenes do, Alex. <laughs> 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 
Any particular scenes that have stood out for you in previous seasons that we can talk about in particular? What was the most challenging scenes for you guys? Um, in the first season, I think it was challenging for me playing Elswith because she was kind of always perceived as quite um, villainous and maybe slightly severe, but it was during the um, illness of their baby Edward where you finally saw a, a glimpse of her nurturing maternal and warm side and that was quite challenging because it was so different from how I'd been playing her previously and really nice so she could become more multi-dimensional as well. What about you, uh, Millie or Emily? Um, well, a scene that was quite tough um, was losing a child in the woods just because of the nature of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be, that would be hard. That would be hard. <laughs> uh, which side? We with that side. We'll go to this side next. Hello there. Hello. Um, I find shows like The Last Kingdom and other medieval drama are great to inspire and give color to fans of another little thing called Dungeons and Dragons. I was wondering if any member of your team ever played or was curious to try it one day. Wow. I am. I've never, pl I've never played it, but I really, really want to give it a go. I still, like... <laughs> oh, you fan, please. Can, someone you? Just, can I just come and play it with some of you guys at some point? Yeah. You? All right, all right. You can teach me the rules. Oh, there you go. Anyone else? Anyone, uh, have you, I, I'd, be, I'd be up for it. I, actually, I, I uh, have a very good friend who uh, I live with in L.A., and she's into it, and, um, and I haven't had time yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join one. You're going to get into it. Yeah. There you go. That, that solved your problem. Look out for Toby. He'll be in one of the stalls later stocking up on all the bits and pieces. <laughs> yeah. That's called chaotic evil or chaotic neutral. That's where you want to go. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, That's sweet. my advice. Okay, sweet. Chaotic Chao evil or chaotic neutral? Yes. I thought right. you said Celtic neutral. Okay, chaotic neutral. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going for. Chaotic <laughs> neutral, my favourite. Lovely, thank you. Uh, hello there. Hi, I'm from the Last Kingdom TV group. Hello. Hi, and I'm a moderator oh, for Alex's oh personal fan site. I'd just like to ask him, uh, in the first two seasons... Well, it's lovely to meet you, first of all. Oh, it's thanks. Aw awkward, awkward to be so far yeah. apart, but maybe we can... <laughs> Nice to meet you. Um, I, in the first two seasons, all the ladies have been very strong, but very caring, with the exception possibly of Queen Ail, the Lady Aylesworth over <laughs> there. Uh, um, how did you find playing against a totally evil, vicious person in the shape of Skage in this, in this season? <laughs> well, she's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually enjoyed it. I mean, I, I think, I think uh, it was great because she is such a lovely person in real life and then she's able to turn it on and, and really make your blood chill. So, um, yeah, I, I had a great time. Loved working with Taya. Okay, lovely. Thanks, Ali. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Uh, over to you, sir. Hi there. Um, first, for the lady who just spoke, your T-shirt is awesome and I want one. Um, <laughs> Second, with apologies, writer, I miss your name at the beginning of the panel. Stephen. Stephen. Smooth. Um, <laughs> you mentioned... Uh, I'm nailing it. Keep going, fellas. <laughs> um, now, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, you have to condense multiple books into a season. Are there any characters or arcs that you really regret having to cut for the sake of the overall narrative? Oh, good question. Uh, yes. <laughs> Always. Yeah. And, um, and to be honest, the, 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 the most pain I felt was when we did the season one. Because mm -hmm. the majority of 75% of book one, Uhtred, is um, a boy. So there's a huge amount of story there when he was a boy um, that we just... Um, we, we, we couldn't do, you know, because from, from a television world point of view, we needed Uhtred to be a man as soon as possible, and we got him end of first act, he was a man. But then what I did do is that I, I mined stories from when he was a boy and tried to bring as much as I could into um, <coughs> events when he was a man. 
but there were, there were things of, of when he knew Alfred, when Alfred was a young man, that we couldn't use. There were, there were other stories of when he first went to London as a boy that we couldn't use. So, so of course, you know, with, with, with books written by Bernard Cornwell, there's always going to be um, blood on the carpet. There's always going to be stuff that you can't use because it's, it's kind of impossible. Um, so, yeah, there's always regrets, always. But it, it, it's kind of my job to make a choice. And I think, you know, I think everyone who reads the books kind of does what I do anyway. They, they, they'll fill it and they'll focus and they'll build up stories and they'll create images in their own mind. Um, I'm just lucky enough to actually get those images made into, 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 and, and lay down on film. So, so yeah, of course. Yeah. Are there any... Thanks, thanks for the question. Good question. Thank you, good question. Are there any um, stuff that you've shot that didn't make it out there, that, that, that you had to cut in the, in the edit? That, that well, we try not to do that because if, if, you, if, if, if there's film on the edit floor, well, then that's, that's tens of thousands of pounds. We barely have time to yeah. shoot the stuff that makes it. It's, it's, <laughs> You know, so most of the cuts, I might write a script that's over length and then suddenly we've got a script where I've got to lose 10 minutes. And that's when it becomes, you can cut five minutes out and that's okay, but then it gets really, really painful of, of losing scenes that you know that you can't film. Because th there's no point in filming because they'll, they'll never make it into the show. So, that, so that's, but it's easier to make the cuts, it's easier putting paper in the bin than to spend tens of thousands of pounds filming something only for the film to go in the bin. Absolutely. Yeah. Producers love him. <laughs> uh, right, I'm going to come down. Thanks. <laughs> Hi. Um, to Alex, have you ever been filming a scene and you've been so immersed in it that you actually believe you're the character? <laughs> I certainly hope it's every scene that he films he believes is the character. <laughs> He better. <laughs> That's a really good question. Th thankfully, I'd never take it off set because Uhtred's a, Uhtred's a bit of a sociopath at times. <laughs> um, I think I've got to say that there were some, some, some scenes with, uh, with David at the end of this series um, that were so wonderful to film because um, they kind of were the culmination of three years of work. Um, and because David is such a good actor, you know, it's very easy to stay, to stay, um, or to completely suspend your disbelief. And, and I've got to say that that was the most uh, rewarding moment of, of my acting career. And, uh, and I've, I've, yeah, I'm, I feel very blessed to have had those moments. And, and I, think, uh, I think in those definitely there wasn't, there wasn't a second where I felt like I, I wasn't completely in it. No. Thank you for that question. Thank you. What about you guys? Any of you guys get completely lost in it? <laughs> what about the rest of you? Is it, is it, is it quite difficult to, to, to go home afterwards and, and just be yourselves? Mm. <laughs> I don't know, it's funny. Filming is really funny because there always is so much to have to suspend your disbelief from. You know, there's always just outside of that screen that you see that there's like a microphone or a boom and so much equipment so yeah to be able to zero in and focus i was going to say actually when when the, the the times that i've worked with you in battles it's always really i've always felt safe because yeah, he's a really really good basically like bordering on being a stuntman in like in terms of how much training you do and how involved you are in it. So it always feels, when you're coming at me, or like you, that time that you pulled me off a horse, there's a, like, threw me to the ground. There's some, like, some people do get lost in it too much. And like, <laughs> someone's, I remember being strangled once in a scene and being like, okay, I'm actually gonna die now. And then, <laughs> but Alex is a, is a, he's a nice man to be beaten up by, basically. He looks after you. I will say the, the great pleasure of making this is Oh, look, we've all been together really for about four years of our life and we all hang out a lot when we were filming over eight months and then sincerely we are really great friends and uh, all the crew come back, most of them who can come back to film it. So it's a gorgeous environment of trust to be able to work and make a show. It's a real privilege to be part of. Wonderful. Uh, we've got time for Through a couple that. more. Uh, we'll go to go over there. Hi. Um well, I wanted to say thank you, Jamie, for coming here to host this panel. And I'm a huge Pleasure. Game of Thrones fan, and I watch Chromecast. And it is an honor for you all you guys to be here. 
And my question is, can you, would you compare the, to the Game of Thrones to The Last Kingdom? Ooh. <laughs> you had to ask. <laughs> but, uh, Stephen. <laughs> uh, well, um, when I set out four years ago, when we, we, we saw five years ago, when I first uh, was asked to do this, um, I hadn't seen Game of Thrones till then, and I have deliberately not watched it. Not, I've heard great, great things about it. My family and friends are all huge fans of it, huge amounts of respect for, for their production values and what they do. But for me personally, I, think, I felt as though I can't watch it because I need The Last Kingdom to have its own voice, and I didn't want to be influenced by, by anything else. Um, but huge respect for, for, for what... Because in a way, I think Games of Thrones opened the door for us. You know, um, I think we may never have been made if it wasn't for, for the path that Games of Thrones tread. Yeah, it is true, because if it weren't for Game of Thrones, I wouldn't have seen The Last Kingdom, yeah, like you said, yeah, 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 along yeah. with yeah. other shows, yeah. yeah. Well, the, that, that's the, the two shows are not mutually exclusive. I, I, think, I think fans of, of one can be fans of the other quite Absolutely. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Jasmine. Jasmine, start a petition for The Last Kingdom to have a fan show, because I might have a job after the end of next year, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we've got time for one over here. Thank you. Uh, hi there, this is for Stephen. Uh, I noticed that on the second season there were uh, numerous writers, so I was wondering what it was like to work with other writers, and uh, is there a writer's room? Was there a, a tone set by yourself, or how did that process work? Now, what we did, there wasn't the writer's room as such. Uh, the second season, um, I think it was, it was eight episodes, and I did five, and then we had... I did six, and we had a writer for, for two further episodes. So um, what we did is, is we met at the beginning, and, and, we, and we broke down the books, and then we, we decided which way we were going to take it. And we produced a series Bible, a rough idea of, of what would be in each episode. Um, and then we go away to write uh, separately, and then the, the, their scripts would come to me. Um, we'd give notes, we'd talk about it a little bit more. We may even say, actually, that that scene or that piece doesn't actually belong in that episode. Let's push that back or pull it forward. Um, not done with setting concrete. Um, so we'd keep talking, further drafts were done. Um, and then I would do um, a polish just to make sure that um, the tone was, was right and the character was, was, was right and stuff like that. Um, but it was, it was a real joy um, to work with the writers because you feed off each other. And that's, you know, particularly in the early stages when you're creating story and, and you, you're trying to identify episodes. It's really, really nice to have other uh, people in the room um, and approach it there. So the, the, it'll be the same with season three. There's ten episodes. I've done seven. And we've got three writers each doing an episode each. But, um, but, but they always come back to me um, just, to, just to maintain... The, the tone of the show, really. Um, and, and, and the writers are completely fine about that. It's, it's very much their episodes. You know, and I just come on and do a little bit of a polish. And that's it. Cool. Thanks, Jim. Thank uh, we got, if this is a really short yeah, one, you go for it. Go for it. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Jim. I'm a big fan. I'm with my brother. Uh, I just want to say thank you to the Facebook team because I won a competition uh, to come here today. And I just saw the exclusive screening of uh, season three, episode one. Humble brag. Wow, blew my mind. Really <laughs> amazing. Uh, my question is, I mean, you all do a fantastic job, and I'm looking forward to November the 9th. Little plug there. Uh, so 19th. <laughs> and um, my question is, will we see another young Ragnar and Uhtred team up to kill another kind of Kartan kind of guy? <laughs> uh, I hope so. You'll certainly see um, young Ragnar, yes, and you'll cool. certainly see them teaming up. Um, and I won't say anything beyond that. Fair enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> but but, but Wonderful. Bias is too good an actor not to see. Yeah, Guys, that's, that's all we've got time for. We could have gone on for ages and ages. Is it November the 9th or 19th? 19th. It's the 19th. November the 19th on Netflix in the US and the UK. And then it will follow uh, in other territories soon after. All 10 episodes are dropping at the same time, which is, uh, so get ready for that binge, take the day off work. And it leaves me to uh, do nothing other than thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, to Stephen, to David, to Alex, to Toby, to Millie, to Eliza, and to Emily. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, The Last Kingdom. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>